therefore propaganda is vastly more important in democratic societies. In recognizing a communist, physical appearance counts for nothing. If he openly declares himself to be a communist, we take his word for it. If a person consistently reads and advocates the views expressed in a communist publication, he may be a communist. If a person supports organizations which reflect communist teachings, or organizations labeled communist by the Department of Justice, she may be a communist. If a person defends the activities of communist nations while consistently attacking the domestic and foreign policy of the United States, she may be a communist. If a person does all these things over a period of time, he must be a communist. But there are other communists who don't show their real faces, who work more silently. By the early 1950s, Communist Party membership had declined considerably, but Cold War propaganda inflated its threat to fantastic proportions. An evil so pervasive that the whole society had to be mobilized to combat it. May Day brings a wave of anti-communist sentiment as 100,000 march down New York's Fifth Avenue in a loyalty parade. Everyone from vets to youngsters reveals his inborn dislike of communism. A united answer to those menacing our country's liberties.